Hey guys, we're back. It's me, Corey, and we're just plowing along. Um, getting ready again for IHOPU and for all the things that are going on. I pretty much have about four main messages that burn on me and that I know by the Lord that I'm called to release and give. Each one of these are, you know, Pacific Oceans of reality and, and in and of themselves. The four things that I, that I know is the knowledge of God. You know, I've heard, you've heard me talk about it. It was on that Sunday morning message that I did recently, that Ephesians 1 cry, the knowledge of God. I want to go deep in the knowledge of God. Number two, the revelation of intercession, that God governs both now and forever through the medium of intercession, and that the saints will rule forever with Jesus through the medium of the intercession. Number three, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Just a side note for you, I'm actually uh, towards the end of writing a book on the power and the glory of fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit with an emphasis on speaking in tongues. I talk about the call, the glory of the new birth, the glory of what has happened by salvation, the new birth. But then I begin to go on the journey of talking what tongues, speaking in my private devotional language, has done to my life. I have about six chapters where we just go off in sharing what God has done. I'm excited about releasing that. We're almost done with the, the, the first uh, manuscript of it. We're looking and hoping it's going to be out in the spring of 2012, so just stay uh, connected with us about that. So fellowshipping with the Spirit is, one of my, uh, uh, is my third passion. And number four, the urgency of the hour. The hour that we're living in, both in this nation and in the nations, the temporal urgency of the hour, the shaking of economies, the, the disturbing of weather patterns, the, the, uh, the crisis and the stirring, the groan of creation in the nations that are happening temporally, but beloved, I believe that it's, it's steadily moving us towards the most greatest and most terrifying hour of human history that's literally going to result with the second coming of Jesus Christ back to the planet. My goodness. I, and, and, and those are the four main themes. And those four, I would say, are the ingredients that are released into the preparation of prophetic messengers. I believe we're about to see revivalists loose to the four corners of the earth these revivalists are going to move in apostolic signs and wonders. They're going to move in healing, deliverance, proclamation of the gospel with power, a prophetic anointing upon them, declaring the word of the Lord, what is coming. They will be declaring uh, what God is doing in this hour. They'll be filled with the knowledge of God. They'll come from the place of intercession. They'll be in deep intimacy with Holy Spirit. And they're going to be proclaiming what's coming upon the planet. These are the revivalists that God's going to be releasing in this hour. Beloved, I want to tell you right now, it's an hour that we quit, that it's an hour that we awake from our slumber and begin to quit getting our eschatology and getting, and getting our understanding from what fiction books say or what movies say or from what our favorite speaker says. And it's time that we get rooted in the Bible concerning what Jesus has to say about the events connected with His second coming. Beloved, I want to tell you, Jesus is coming. That's exciting. That's glorious and that's terrifying. Jesus is coming because He is going to shake all things in His preparation. And He's going to raise up prophetic messengers to prepare the way of the Lord. Beloved, I want to tell you something right now that it's an hour that we begin to wake up and that we begin to prepare ourselves. It's not going to be a church running around in fear. It's going to be a church on fire. It's going to be a church moving in apostolic signs and wonders, moving in glory and power. But it's going to be an hour of great crisis as we as we see the persecution, the rage of Satan loosed upon the earth as he knows his time is short. And he will release great persecution in this nation and all the nations of the earth against the Jewish people and against the prophetic church that stands with them. We're going to see the sin of man rise to such heights as man, even in the light of the glory of God, will still choose darkness. John 3 tells us this is the condemnation. Men love darkness rather than light because light exposes their deeds. And number four, we're going to see the judgments of God. The church isn't going to be wixed out of here in some pre-tribulation rapture. The church is going to be God's agent on the earth in partnership and bringing mercy and bringing justice to the earth. The church is going to be in unity with Jesus, cooperating with Him. And beloved, Jesus is the great judge. He is righteous. He is true. He is compassionate. His judgments cannot be improved upon. He is the excellent physician that is bent with precision of cutting out the cancer called sin and rebellion out of the human race. Hallelujah. And we're going to see the greatest revival spirit ever loosed upon the planet. Revival that's never been seen before. These four realities are going to crescendo. 
the rage of Satan, the sin of man, the judgments of God, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit are all going to converge as prophetic messengers are loose to the four corners of the earth. It's that backdrop of why we're going after preparing a generation. We can't just have conferences to where we get touched. We've got to have mom and dads that go somewhere in God, take a generation by the hand, and put them in front of God, and feed them on these realities. We're going to be kind of... Uh, building on these themes over the next uh, months. And I want you just to stay tuned as we build on this. And I feel like the Lord will equip you in it. Bless you and I'll see you soon.